Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today we have some laser diodes that are both of eBay. I bought uh, two types, they are actually quite cheap, a small one, this one is a small one, and a large one. Now, they are pretty easy to work with, of course. You just power it on, they work with anything from like 3 to 5 volts, and they make the usual laser dot. They are both focusable, you can make the the dot more you can also defocus them on purpose and you make the dot a lot bigger. They are both five milliwatts so they are uh, safe but uh, for some reason the the bigger one is brighter so it's not sure if the power rating is at all to be believed. It's a little bit brighter. I don't know if it shows up on camera. Yeah, uh, it also needs to be... Yeah, this is focused. And just like the other one, it can be defocused uh, arbitrarily. Yeah, they have uh, a lot of divergence only on one side. So the spot that they make is not very... It has uh, like an oblong shape, as you can see. I started thinking about what can I do with those, and uh, I thought that this could be modulated. Instead of just driving them with a battery, if you drive them with some sort of uh, signal, some digital or analog signal, they can be used to transfer information, maybe even a long distance. I don't know how long it would be, but it would be interesting to try. And this is where I found out since I wanted to try modulating them, I made a small oscillator circuit, uh, this one, very simple oscillator circuit, and on the other side I took a photodiode, and this is when I figured out that they are not like constant brightness, they are actually oscillating in some way at a very high frequency, like in the megahertz range, by just shining them onto a photodiode and checking it with an oscilloscope. Let me show you. Here I have connected the photodiode with a parallel resistor connected to a cable that goes to an oscilloscope. And yeah, this part of the circuit is not used, it's not powered. Uh, I am powering the laser diode straight from the batteries. So I'm going to use a piece of tubing in order to sort of align the laser diode on top of the photodiode to the oscilloscope. It is oscillating, as you can see. 50 nanosecond per division and at 5 millivolt per division, AC coupled, about 15 megahertz oscillation. Here I'm shining the light and here is the signal. It's kind of bouncy, 200 nanosecond ish, so it's around 5 megahertz. But also this one is oscillating. I thought that the best solution is just to take it apart. The circuit seems to be all contained in this uh, uh, heat shrink tubing. So here it is with the heat shrink tubing removed. There is a 6-pin integrated circuit. What looks like a resistor or a capacitor on one side while from the other side we have two resistors and one capacitor. The actual laser diode has three pins, which are soldered directly on the PCB. We have two on one side and only one on the other one. The reverse engineer actually turned out uh, uh, quite a few surprises. The first one is that uh, the metal of the, of the case of the laser is actually connected to the positive supply, not to the negative, or it's not floating either. So let me show you. If I connect this one to the positive, and I touch this one, so it is shorted to the positive. If I still touch the negative, nothing happens. This is true also for the bigger ones, so this one is shorted to the positive, 
So this is something that is surprising and uh, you will have to keep in mind when using this kind of lasers because if you like uh, mount them on uh, a mechanical chassis or something that is connected to the negative, you're causing a short. The second surprise, when we look at the circuit, you have the laser diode which has the three uh, connections as we have seen before. One is not uh, isolated uh, from the metal case and it's the positive one. Then you've got two isolated connections that I just called A and B and this is how is the printer circuit board placed and soldered. So on one side we have three components. One turned out to be a capacitor and is connected between the positive and the negative, so it's just a decoupling capacitor. Then we have two resistors, one 3.5 kilo ohm and one 1.1 1 .1 ohm. And on the other side we have the mystery component, six pin uh, SMD component, and uh, it turned out to be another resistor, this one, 2.4 kilo ohm. Now, what doesn't make sense in this schematic is that for this to be an integrated circuit, usually you need the connection to both the positive and the negative supply uh, in order to power the internal circuits. Uh, if you follow the negative, there is a via here that is connected here, and so it goes to one of the uh, pins of the six pin uh, mystery component. That makes sense. But the positive is only connected to the capacitor, to a resistor, and to the laser diode. So it doesn't go to any of the pins of these six pin components. So what uh, uh, I thought uh, is that this may not be an integrated circuit at all, and uh, it could be uh, something like two transistors in a single 16 pa 6 pin package, essentially two normal BGT transistors. And uh, if uh, you uh, take this pin assignment and try to reverse engineer the schematic, you come up with this, which makes sense. This is the laser diode, it contains not just the laser diode, but also a photodiode that is used to uh, close and control loop and uh, regulate the output power. The cathode of the uh, laser diode is connected to one of the two transistors with a 1.1 ohm resistor at the ground. And then this one is connected with uh, a base resistor to the positive, and this also makes sense. So with nothing here connected, the laser diode power would be limited essentially only by this resistor. But uh, uh, with this circuit added, when the photodiode generates some current as uh, uh, an effect of being lit by the laser diode, it polarizes the base of the transistor, which, which basically limits the, um, the current uh, through this transistor. So this is a rather simple control loop, but it is somehow unstable. To make it stop oscillating would be to limit the bandwidth of this uh, control loop. And for this, one way would be to connect a capacitor here, between the base and the collector. Due to the Miller effect, uh, this amplifies the capacitance, so you can add uh, even a, a small, tiny capacitor and still have uh, um, a good effect in reducing the bandwidth. Before we modify the circuit, let's probe it directly to confirm it is oscillating. Now, the collector of uh, uh, this transistor that drives the laser diode is pin 3, which would be this one. If we have a look with the oscilloscope, indeed it is oscillating at the same frequency as before. In the end I made two modifications to the circuit, not just one. The first one is to add this capacitor, 390 picofarad, in order to uh, stabilize the control loop. This is the capacitor. I didn't have a proper SMD one, so I took a true hole one and soldered it. And the second modification is that I removed uh, one resistor from the circuit and I attached it to an external wire. It is this resistor. And uh, uh, so basically I cut this connection and, and I connected the other side of the resistor to an input wire. This makes it possible to turn on and off the uh, laser diode with a logical signal uh, in order to be able to modulate it. So let's see it in operation to see first of all that it is not oscillating and then we are going to try to modulate it. It turns on. That's good. And now I need to probe the cathode of the laser diode. So 
I'm probing in the right spot. And as you can see, no oscillation whatsoever this time. So we have stabilized the control loop. This is the circuit uh, that I uh, built on the breadboard when uh, we started the video. It's an oscillator with, ju with just uh, a Schmitt trigger inverter that I can change the frequency with uh, this 10k potentiometer uh, from uh, around 60 to around 400 kHz, sort of. Uh, this time we have modified the laser dial with an actual input in order to be able to modulate it. Uh, digital modulation only turning it uh, on and off. At the other side we have an SFH 206 uh, photodiode with a 100 ohm resistor in parallel connected to the oscilloscope in order to see the result of the modulation. This is the circuit that I've been using all along in order to also see the um, auto oscillation of the of the actual laser diode control loop. If it is uh, as built we can just change the frequency with this uh, potentiometer and uh, the laser is uh, connected optically to the photodiode so that we can see the result uh, on the oscilloscope. Here is the result in modulated laser diode. This time we are at uh, two, yes, two microsecond per division, so it means that uh, a square wave uh, um, with a period from this side to the side of the oscilloscope would be uh, 50 kHz, uh, with uh, a period till the middle is 100 kHz, uh, and so on. As you can see, the waveform is not very symmetrical, unfortunately. It turns out that when you turn it on, it starts with a spike, uh, because uh, um, most likely what I think is that this is when it goes open loop, this is when the control loop starts, it takes some time to settle, and then it finally reaches the output power. When you turn it off it's also much more smooth when turning it on. But this is at around 60 kHz square wave modulation. If we increase up till about 100 kHz and nothing changes very much, but uh, when we increase further, this um, initial turn on time peaks, as you can see. Let me go to one microsecond per division in order to see it better. And uh, eventually, it distorts completely the waveform. So this control loop uh, gets into the way of the modulation and uh, in non-trivial ways, because uh, it overshoots and then goes back, and uh, it demonstrates uh, quite a weird frequency response. So it means that uh, uh, modulation is limited to around, well, this would be 100 kilohertz, probably 150 or so kilohertz, okay? This would be 200 kilohertz, and I think it's already too much. Um, the oscilloscope actually starts uh, having some trouble in trying to lock onto the signal as well, so uh, it would be not very good for uh, doing some digital modulation uh, at 200 kHz, but probably 150, 100 kHz, that would be good. I think that in order to modulate it faster, uh, the control loop would need to be redesigned from scratch. But still, 100 kHz modulation is... Uh, pretty good baud rate for a serial port, for example, so it would be possible to create a serial port over laser. Maybe I'll do it in a future video. For now, I will end it here. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye!